All right, hello everybody. Welcome back to the Hearthstone Champions League. We're getting towards the halfway point for Group D here. We're jumping into the losers match between Stan Sifka and Firebat. This is an elimination match, so the loser is out of the tournament. The winner moves on to the decider match. Once again, I'm TJ, joined by Protohype from Follow Esports. It's been a pretty cool day so far, I would say. Wouldn't you, Protohype? <laughs> Put words in my mouth. Oh, I'm just kidding. It was, it's been uh, it's been great. Uh, really solid matches so far. Uh, really well played overall, as expected by the the group with the former and the current reigning world champion, uh, along with Stan Sivka and Cipher. Uh, Cipher unexpectedly, but very quickly dispatching Firebat uh, three to one, if I recall correctly, in that uh, in that first match that we watched together. Mm -hmm. And uh, really really exciting really exciting decks so far. I the the Warrior Druid uh, staple across across the group was a bit. Uh, a bit strange, but uh, we've we've seen them work out. Those deck choices work out really well for the players so far, and uh, some interesting third decks definitely brought for uh, for each player. Yeah, for sure. And we'll see if Stinsivka can once again overcome a warrior in the last matchup. He, uh, with his hunter deck, defeated the patron warrior of Uskaka, uh, but eventually went on to lose the series. Of course, since he's in the lower match. We'll see if this time around he can uh, take the Hunter match once again. He's already got Firebat down to pretty low health, but there is a card there that can make quite a bit of difference, and that is just a Cartoon Heart. True enough. Um, he does uh, Stan Sifka hitting the, the bow on the Alkalite, which was a, a very welcome pickup, most certainly, uh, especially when you're you're facing down that Alkalite with a, uh, a Haunted Creeper, not quite the uh, the best card suited to deal with. Uh, something that draws you cards for for each damage taken. Uh, Stan Sifka picking up a knife juggler on this turn. Probably just going to go ahead and get those. Uh, go for that that percentage play and get the hero power going. And uh, with with no real uh, minion or um, solid value play to be making on turn five, Fireback going to be on the back foot for a while. Yeah, and. He is, he might be able to reach that stabilization point, but high main is going to be really tough to deal with. He does have one of the best ways to deal with it with Owl Slam plus Execute, but will that be enough to keep him back in the game? Barbat already hovering over the just a card true heart, so. <laughs> like, uh, please allow me to play this. <laughs> yeah, definitely will um, be good to start getting that hero power going. He's going to forego the armor up this turn, but he will be able to uh, cash in on that investment uh, eventually as the game progresses. For sure. Uh, we're going to see a Hunter's Mark come out uh, for Stan Sifka. He does not have any traps to get any immediate value out of this bow, but he does want to keep it around regardless. Mm -hmm. um, noting that he does not have a second one in hand and he will not be able to get the draw off of Quick Shot uh, in the foreseeable future. Uh, as you said, Fireback going to go ahead and silence. Uh, slam and execute the the high man it's interesting that that's one of one of the better answers that warrior has to high man it is uh, the best the, answer i'd the three say card, the three card split yeah yeah it's uh definitely definitely quite a bit of uh stuff you have to commit to one creature but yeah solid nonetheless and it is off the board uh stan Sifka putting down a a comparable amount of power in uh in shredder and he will continue to go face with that abusive pickup yeah and Firebat does have even more stabilization tools. He, he needs to sort of find a mix between putting power on the board and using armor up. So he's going to use his armor up every turn and use shield block at sort of like the last possible moment. Right, right. So he can develop a threat. Shield block definitely a a problematic card for, for Hybrid Hunter. Um, Stance of going to continue to, to ignore Firebat's board, especially now that he's played a Sylvanas. Uh, especially. Mm -hmm. Firebat will not be able to kill off that Sylvanas on this following turn. So I would not be shocked to see Stan Sifka go ahead and uh, opt to unleash just for one, uh, needing every point of damage that he can get, and most most certainly the, the draw of Quick Shot. But uh, it looks like he agrees, and he's going to go for it. Yeah. And th this could get punished pretty heavily by Brawl, because Sylvanas will steal whatever comes out from it. Right. Uh, the only thing is there'd be a little secret up, brawls a lot of mana, so you just have to armor up and potential for a lot of damage to be staring at you on the other side, but, you know, not really a 12. 12 is kind of a lot to do in a single turn, even with the weapon equipped. 
yeah, that's that's a tall order for sure without uh, without any creatures on board. Um, actually, I think that kind of benefited Stansifka not hitting uh, anything too huge coming out of that coming out of that shredder. But it looks like he is going to going to save the brawl and uh, just get that that sludge belcher down. Although I have to say, with the uh, hmm, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm not sure if I if I like uh, if I like Belcher there. But what do you think about that? Ah, uh, it's pretty tough. Um, it de I don't know. I don't think you're ever gonna find more bra value than bra out of brawl than that. Sure, sure. That's that's kind of what I was thinking. I was kind of on, kind of on the brawl line, but uh, just in case, uh, it all came out. But in, you know. Now this gives Sansifka a chance to deal with Sylvanas on his own accord and still preserve creatures. And Eaglehorn Bow is, it doesn't do anything right now, but it's going to end up being a, a pretty good pickup in the coming turns. And Firebat's going to go down to one. So he's going to need to brawl. He can brawl shield block plus armor up and uh, take himself out of range, at least for this turn. But we'll see what trap it is that Sansifka runs. Did he run explosive in the last match? Because that could make it so Firebat might be in a position where he's not able to attack for quite a while. Sure. We only saw one trap from Sansifka in the last match, and that was a freezing trap on the boom bot from the Doctor Groom. Um, yeah, I, I don't know about I don't know about the ordering on that one. Uh, if he if he brawls first and he does get the hero power, uh, he goes up to 12 HP, and then. Uh, you know, he, he could play the Belcher as a follow-up, and it's much more uh, much more difficult for Stan Sifka to get through that Belcher on the, the one outer of the Owl, as opposed to just about any damage card that he could rip off the top to get through it on that turn with uh, with minions still on the board to support it. So, you know, an inter interesting call. Uh, I would like to hear his reasoning for it uh, yeah. sometime in the future. Oh, wow, quick shot off the top. So not quite lethal yet, but he does have the potential to draw into something that's going to help him out a lot. And uh, he's going to put Firebat down to two. And I think this is that. Oh, Alex Straza off the top. That'll do, Pig. Yeah, that'll do, Pig. That'll do. <laughs> very, very solid. Very solid top deck. But arguably the best in that in that scenario. Uh, yeah. I, don't, I don't see a way that Stan Sifka can come back from this game. Yeah, there is a freezing trap activated because that freezing trap was not highlighted. Um, and so Sansifka is going to go ahead and attack into the Hound because once Alex Draws is frozen, for sure, it can never be played again. Bum, bum, bum. Banished. <laughs> <laughs> the Path of Exile, for sure. I think Firebat's looking to uh, to charge on this Grom and uh, just get the Hero Power on so he can uh, deal with this Alex Draws. Although, uh, if he armors up, he will be at 18, and he has seen double quick shot and kill command from Stan Sifka, so he may just go face with the Alex, and he, mm -hmm. uh, he agrees. Yeah, you're only taking two damage off the board Yeah, by killing the Sylvanas, and you're missing eight damage to face. Sure, sure. And, you know, he might just freeze the Grom again, but that then he can't armor up, so that'd be a little bit dangerous. Actually, he'd be dead if he did that, so don't, don't do that. <laughs> Don't do that. Yeah. Uh, Bash is a okay pickup. It's a, it allows him to fight back a little bit. But he actually has no way to kill this... To kill the entire board. Right. So if he bashes face and he hero powers, he would go up to 11 and 15 armor. And if he rips a kill command, that would be exact lethal from Stan Sifka's perspective. So he may he may opt to uh, to uh, try and try and prevent that from happening. That would look that would look really sad from this perspective. So uh, we may see may see an Alex run into this run into this high man and just bash off a two two and uh, try and grom down whatever comes down in the following turn. Uh huh. Hmm. It's actually really tough. That freezing trap makes it super awkward. Right, right. Alright, so he's just going to play the Emperor Thoris in. I think this play makes a little more sense, but this means he is dead to kill command. Or Huffer. 
It's over! Oink, oink. Wow. And after all that, Stan Sifka gets through Jessicar Trueheart on turn six. Shield block in Alex Straza from one. And he still finds the win with the Hunter. This Hunter deck is doing work for Stan Sifka. He takes game one. Yeah, very, very strong showing for that deck. Uh, a pretty solid opening. He had uh, just about everything you want uh, from the Hunter's perspective. He had, I think, two Leper Gnomes, a Haunted Creeper, and the, the High Main, and uh, as well as a Bow really early on. Uh, hitting that second one was definitely a huge point uh, in that game. He was operating on little to no cards uh, with that Alex Strauss on deck. So, uh, solid one for Stan Sifka. Yeah, that's a tough matchup to go into and take a win. Firebat just cannot seem to find wins today. It seems like he's struggling every game, so we're just going to jump right into match number two here. And it is going to be Druid for Stan Sifka versus Druid for Firebat, so we're going to move into a mirror matchup. Yes, we are. Um, we see the Wild Growth and a Sylvanas uh, on deck for Firebat. He's going to opt to throw that Sylvanas back in favor of... Uh, some cards that synergize perhaps more adequately with uh, the acceleration on the coin. Definitely a, a reasonable play. Uh, Stan Sifka does have the Darnassus Aspirant on two, as well as a Shredder pickup uh, and an Innervate play uh, if he so chooses going into turn three if that Aspirant uh, eats the dirt, but it will not, and Firebat will play some acceleration of his own. That's a lot of acceleration, double Innervate. Good thing he has some cycle because... That would be a pretty rough hand if it was just Innervate right. Savage or... Right. And Firebat might be falling behind a little bit here. He is going to use the power to Shredder. He's got Coin Emperor Thorsan next turn with combo in hand. So if he can survive the onslaught of this early uh, board for Stan Sifka, then he'll be in a good position. Especially since Stan Sifka's hand is just bad. <laughs> double Innervate, <laughs> double Savage. Or I guess if he picks up Force of Nature, he's going to be able to make a lot of things happen with that because he can force nature double savage or at some point oh man look at this emperor thorsan <laughs> back to back he can he has a double combo of his own with if he plays emperor thorsan this turn with all that value yes he does on uh, turn yeah. nine on turn nine no less uh, firebat still facing down quite a bit of damage opting to uh take away stan sifka's acceleration a bit more valuable than the uh the spell damage from Drake at this point in the game. Mm -hmm. um, opting not to play the Thorison on this particular turn, saving the coin perhaps for a, uh, a really unexpected uh, combo turn with double Savager in hand for each player. But Firebat arguably able to use that to, to more effectiveness in the, in the coming turns. So, tough choice. Druid the Claw, you know, puts more power on the board right now but it's more flexible as the game goes on. You may not find another time to play Harrison Jones. And also Drew the Claw is flexible with Savator, especially with double Innervate Savator. Next turn, he could have, you know, 10 total mana on turn six. He could reasonably Druid of the Claw, Savator with a hero power, you know, for an extra nine damage burst from hand. So he's actually just gonna not play anything and just hero power down this shredder to keep to try and protect his board. Whoa. Huh. That's an interesting play on, on five mana. That is super bold, and that gives a huge tell over to Firebat. He's thinking, well, his hand is all spells. Right. Or big creatures. Huh. Very interesting. I guess he puts him down to 14. With, that's... Hmm. Yeah, you kind of have to expect if you're not playing any creatures that he has a way, some way to deal with deal with your board in some capacity, right? Because even with a, uh, even with a wrath or a, uh, a swipe, um, it's not looking too great for Sifka. But at the same time, uh, Firebat only able to play uh, a Thorson on this turn, no uh, real removal of his own. And uh, I guess he could have opted to to force there if he would have liked to uh, run the run the auto barber in and. Yeah. You know, giving up the Thorison for a turn and tried to clear out uh, Sansifka's Drake and whatever came out. That the of the is actually lethal. I think that's exactly 14 damage with double Innervate Savage Roar hero power. Oh my goodness. 
Oh no, it's just lethal without the second innervate. Okay. Uh, he actually had one over if he decided to use the second innervate, so. <laughs> Fire, poor Firebat! Oh my goodness. Densifka takes a very quick 2 0 lead in the series and a victory swig of his OJ. <laughs> pretty pretty happy with himself after that one and uh, a a really unfortunate day for for the former world champion getting uh having a whole host of highlight reel uh highlight reel worthy unexpected lethals from from his perspective yeah what? ah well this means that Tensipka just has one deck remaining to find a win with and it is control warrior so firebat is going to throw out the worst matchup first that is uh his rogue deck which we didn't really see too much of an identity from this rogue deck. It ran tempo tools like Dread Corsair. Sure. But the rest of it just looked like a pretty standard oil rogue. Yeah, I was uh, expecting something a little more wonky after we saw the, the Dread Corsair, but as it happens, uh, the modern iteration of, of Patron has been playing that as a, as a solid value card with weapons for a long time, so perhaps an adaptation that rogue would be good to consider undergoing, uh, mm -hmm. especially with the, the similar package of mid-game value minions that they want to be playing. So, uh, an interesting, interesting deck coming from Firebat. Yeah, he ran in an Assassin's Blade, which sort of gives you that more consistent damage. So, Dread right. Corsair fits a little bit better with that card. I really like Assassin's Blade right now, because Assassin's Blade is super good in a slower sure. meta, where weapon removal is a little bit more rare. And that's exactly what it is right now. So, it, it I, I like the addition. Mm -hmm. We'll have to see if it's going to pay off for him in this matchup. Yeah, we've seen a, a couple more Harrisons in this tournament, or in this group at least, uh, rather uh, than we've seen in the past uh, in recent times, but definitely a, uh, a solid meta call on the Assassin's Blade, I think, despite the fact that we have seen those Harrisons in a light well coming out of the, of the Shredder for Firebat. Yeah, Firebat said something to himself when he saw that light well come out. Traitor. <laughs> <laughs> I know, he's like, oh jeez. Can't catch a break. Even though Lightwell is annoying, it's five health. It's hard to get through. Against Warrior, you just want stuff that's that puts on pressure. Right. You're not gonna win if you sit back and don't have creatures and let the Warrior just armor up every turn because you do sort of have a finite amount of damage in this deck. And true. Um, Ensue can... massive dirtling. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So at at some point. As long as the warrior has enough for Bilbo early on, and they have creatures to put pressure of their own, it's it's a really good matchup. And Justicar Trueheart is the card that basically solidifies that. If if they get multiple turns of value from that card alone, it's going to be really tough for Firebat to piece together enough damage to win the game. Yeah, especially having to dedicate this turn to sapping a, a pilot of Shredder. That's never something you want to be doing from as a rogue player against. Uh against warrior just because you, you do lack so much damage like you said but you know a light well with a uh, with the tinker buff is definitely nothing to scoff at so uh, firebat's gonna get a board clear here and uh we'll be able to uh answer probably just about any creature that comes down for stansifka next turn so a bit yeah. of a bit of leeway and uh, a reasonable life total he has he has stansifka had so far yeah oh look at that light well it's like a <laughs> look at that light well. it's like a fierce monkey without taunt that heals Wow, I think I would take that to be honest. That's a uh, sure. That's a pretty solid card. I play a three four. <laughs> sure. I play. Well, it depends how much mana it was, but sure. Uh, it will get dealt with, but it lived a good life. It's it one did. of the best light walls I've ever seen. <laughs> Same, honestly. <laughs> We've seen Assassin's Blade coming out for a fire bet. Uh, not able to equip it up and go to town this turn. Not that it would do a whole lot against the uh, the four heal hero power of a. Uh, of Stan Sifka with that active Justicar. Yeah, at this stage, with just that on the board, he could just hear a power of return and ignore the wind <laughs> sleeve. That really puts it in perspective of how strong that card is. At, yeah. At yeah. Um, solid, uh, solid shield sign coming down for Stan Sifka, and he's going to go ahead and get this Thorson online with, uh, honestly, a, a lot of value in, uh, in his current hand. Yeah. And firebat's gonna try and fight back on the board but he's got a lot of damage to get through assassin's blade is going to be a good card if you can find a weapon buff to get that assassin's blade rolling he, that's quite a bit of consistent damage it might be able to at the very least negate the just a card true heart <laughs> that's kind of funny that it is it's a bit it's a bit pressing yeah <laughs> 
very a very strong card in uh, in Warrior for sure. Um, Ragnaros coming down uh, on seven for uh, for Stan Sivka, and it is not going to take Whoa. out the the solo Earthen Ring, the the young hero. And we do see a Cold Light coming out for Firebat and double Assassin's Blade. What? The rough thing here is that Firebat can't play both Sap and Assassin's Blade, so he's going to ignore the Rag for this turn just to start applying this pressure. Right, and really exactly what he has to be doing in this scenario with, with Justicar active and threatening mm -hmm. to take over the game. Yeah. Well, this is a lot of damage. Uh, he can... Sl Actually, how much damage is this? He can slam the... Earthring Farseer, play Baron Geddon, hit face, and Rag would guarantee hit face. Um, but he'd pr be pretty vulnerable because he'd be at 14 health after the turn would be over, so. Sure. Might just be safer to just, you know, smack this. Right. He could also. Ring uh, and play Shield Maiden. Right. He could also slam and Taskmaster if you would really like to at this point and then just end up hero powering. Um, really no way you can die from 20 in that position, I don't think, on four cards, uh, mm -hmm. seeing it, having having seen a Tinker already come out yeah. uh, from Firebat. So and I, I would, would not be shocked if he, if he didn't go with Geddon, but uh, it seems like that's not what he wanted to be doing with the, the slam on the 2-2. Yeah. I actually like uh, fitting in the tank up here. Uh, sure, it sure. makes a little bit more sense, so probably playing just like a Paladin Shredder. And that's what he does. That way, next turn, he can stack the Shield Maiden. Cool Taskmaster. Okay. Diversifying his assets, I suppose? Sure. Um, it's an interesting read from Sifka. Maybe he just figured uh, he won't be getting any real value out of that uh, out of that Taskmaster in the near future. Sifka muttering something to himself. A uh, bit of a, a strange, disgruntled face. Maybe, maybe not what he wanted to be doing, but... Um, he does have that Shield Maiden coming down next turn, so... Uh, this is only going to get worse for Firebat. At least he finds a way to deal with the board as it stands. For sure. And he puts quite a bit of pressure on. He's actually going to put San Sifka down to 9. Which is a decent amount. And next turn he does have Assassin's Blade. So if he can find some direct damage over the next couple turns, he might be able to sneak out a win. But it's going to be pretty tough from this stage. For sure. And if, uh, I think, Firebat's... If he draws a Tinker and he were to play the Assassin's Blade, that would put him up to six damage on the next turn. And if uh, if Sansuka finds a way to fi uh, fit in his hero power, which I'm assuming he will, he'll be at roughly he'll be at 13 HP. Hmm. He can't do it in one draw, but if he the problem is if he does uh, if Firebat does hit a sprint or something to catch him up on cards, I think that'll just be too many hero powers mm -hmm. to uh, to chunk through Sansuka's Shield Maiden coming down on the following turn. Yeah, and now he's down to seven. He knows that there's a rag in the hand, right, so right. he is—he should know that he's dead here because just a weapon will kill the Dread Corsair, and the rag will come down. And that is Dan Sivka taking the series three to zero, and Firebat has been eliminated from the Hearthstone Champions League. Dan Sivka still not out of the groups yet. He's got to win one more. He'll face the loser of the next matchup between Oskaka and Cypher. So that was a good match. Yeah, I, I honestly, if I if I had to predict what would have happened uh, pre bracket, this probably would have been one of the last scenarios we find ourselves in. Fireback mm -hmm. getting quickly dispatched by Stan Sivka. Not not a call that I would have made lightly, at least. And uh, you know, Cypher uh, doing really well against him in his own right, and. Now, that's unfortunate to see the, the former chap go out so quickly, but uh, I'm sure we'll see uh, great things from the other the other leaders of the group. And, you know, well played to Firebat. Yeah. All right. So uh, the winner's match will be coming up next. It's going to be Oskaka taking on Cypher. The winner of that match does make it out of groups and move on to the playoff stage. But before we do that, we are going to have to take a quick break. Don't go anywhere, guys. Hearthstone Champions League continues right after this.